Hello, welcome to NeoScribe. Years before SpaceX or Blue Origin achieved any success, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos met for dinner one night in 2004. They talked about what their companies were working on and about rocket architectures. It's hard to imagine that the pair had any idea that 15 years later, SpaceX would actually be developing a rocket to go to Mars, and that Blue Origin was on the verge of completing a heavy lift orbital launch vehicle. And there's no doubt that the two had any idea of the extent of the rivalry that would unfold between them. It's a rivalry that spans many years and many occurrences, tracing back to the affair of poaching employees. Between 2005 and 2008, Blue Origin lured away a number of employees from SpaceX. I couldn't find a source with the exact number, but it got to the point where SpaceX designed a way to filter employees' emails for the word Blue Origin. According to a lawsuit filed by SpaceX against a former employee, the company claims that Blue Origin would hire carefully targeted SpaceX employees in order to gain information on SpaceX design efforts. The episodes of employee poaching were followed by a quarrel for the historic launch pad 39A. 39A was the launch site for the majority of Apollo missions, along with many space shuttle missions, including the first orbital spaceflight of NASA's space shuttle program. By 2013, the site sat dormant two years removed from the end of the space shuttle program, costing NASA $100,000 per month. NASA decided to lease the site for commercial use, and that's when SpaceX and Blue Origin jumped in for the opportunity. SpaceX wanted exclusive rights for the launch pad, and shortly after finding out, Blue Origin submitted their own bid. You see, Bezos is fanatical about anything involving the history of space exploration, especially the Apollo era. His passion for space exploration stems back to when he watched the Apollo 11 landing when he was just five years old, and ultimately led him to found Blue Origin years later. He even financed the recovery of an F-1 engine that propelled the Saturn V rocket from Apollo 11. So Bezos wanted to use 39A as a launch site for the new Glenn rocket that was and still is under development. In 2013, an intense battle for the rights for 39A unfolded between SpaceX and Blue Origin. Blue Origin argued that the launch pad should not be operated exclusively by any one company. Additionally, Blue Origin promised that if they won the bid, they would share the launch pad with other companies, including SpaceX. SpaceX ended up winning the lease of the esteemed launch site. The decision boiled down to the fact that SpaceX already had a seven-year relationship with NASA dating back to the 2006 Commercial Orbital Transportation Services contract. On top of that, Blue Origin was far from having a rocket that could even use the site, with the new Glenn many years away. But Bezos didn't take NASA's decision lying down. He filed a legal protest. Blue Origin also teamed up with SpaceX's nemesis, the United Launch Alliance, or ULA. Blue Origin and the ULA lobbied several senators who had close ties with the aerospace industry. The senators wrote a letter to the NASA administrator, but the attempt to change NASA's mind was not successful. However, they did a great job making Musk angry. Musk found it ridiculous that Bezos thought he should get 39A when Blue Origin has yet to put so much as a toothpick into orbit. His words, not mine. Anyway, the next conflict came the following year in 2014 and centered around a patent. Three years before SpaceX started testing vertical landing technology, and six years before Blue Origin first landed the new Shepard, Bezos filed patent number 8678321 in 2009. The patent is 10 pages long, titled Sea Landing of Space Launch Vehicles and Associated Systems and Methods, and it claimed the rights behind the concept of recovering rocket boosters on a landing ship in the ocean or other bodies of water. By the time SpaceX announced that it contracted a Louisiana shipyard to build the first landing drone, Bezos' patent was approved seven months earlier. Musk was furious when he found out about the patent. He thought the patent was ridiculous and that the idea of landing rocket boosters has been seen on movies and many proposals over the past 50 years. Musk in turn filed a suit to challenge the patent. Letting the patent go unchallenged would be a major blow for SpaceX, and Blue Origin would be able to charge them or any other company a license fee in order to practice the concept. SpaceX and their lawyers argued that Bezos was far from the original inventors of the concept. 
They provided this 1959 Russian sci-fi movie called The Sky Calls, illustrating that the idea was thought long before the patent. Blue Origin eventually withdrew most of the claims in the patent. However, they weren't done poking at SpaceX in 2014. The company decided to once again team up with the ULA, this time in a bigger way. The ULA announced that Blue Origin was in the running to build the engine for the ULA's Vulcan rocket. The Vulcan rocket is the replacement for the Atlas V, which uses Russian manufactured engine, which is um, a big no-no in today's geopolitical climate. And in order to understand the depth of this part of the story, we need to touch on SpaceX lawsuit against the United States Air Force. Leading up to 2014, SpaceX was trying hard to get certified by the Air Force to launch national security launches, which are very, very lucrative. There is a lot of money at stake, as the DoD is projected to spend around $70 billion on national security launches by 2030. The certification process for SpaceX kept getting delayed and delayed, and SpaceX missed out on a batch of launch contracts, which was awarded to the ULA, which essentially had a monopoly on national security launches. In response, SpaceX filed a lawsuit against the Air Force in spring 2014, accusing the agency of preventing SpaceX from competition in favor of the ULA. And during this ordeal, Musk criticized the Air Force for relying on Russian manufactured engines for their launches. He was quoted saying, Our toughest competitor on the international launch market is the Russians, and the US Air Force sends them hundreds of millions of dollars every year for Russian engines. It's super messed up, and something needs to be done about it. So going back to Blue Origin's potential partnership with the ULA, they were essentially taking away Musk's most compelling argument about Russian engines. When asked about the potential partnership, Musk said, If all your competitors are banding together to attack you, that's like a good compliment. I think a very sincere compliment. End quote. SpaceX eventually dropped the lawsuit against the Air Force and now is a major competitor for national security launches. 2015 brought the SpaceX and Blue Origin rivalry into the Twitter sphere. In November 2015, Blue Origin successfully landed the new Shepard rocket after reaching outer space. Bezos sent out this boastful tweet about the achievement, calling the used rocket the rarest of beasts. Then Musk was quick to reply to point out that SpaceX successfully landed the Grasshopper rocket three years earlier. Then, just one month later, SpaceX successfully landed the Falcon 9 for the first time. Bezos sent the following tweet. Congrats at SpaceX on landing Falcon's suborbital booster stage. Welcome to the club. That tweet angered both Musk and SpaceX employees who were deep in a celebration festivities when the word got out. But by the time Musk went to reply back, he saw that many SpaceX fans were already letting Bezos have it. In the many months to follow, Musk would point out the major difference between landing the New Shepard, which required handling speeds of Mach 9, and the Falcon 9, which required handling speeds of Mach 30. Orbit and space are different leagues. Since that occurrence, it largely appears that Musk and Bezos have settled on a truce. Except for this quick jab by Musk in 2017. You're a competitive person. You're competing with the likes of Jeff Bezos, uh, in uh, Jeff who? <laughs> in rockets. Besides that, Bezos and Musk have displayed good sportsmanship lately. This is a tweet from Bezos wishing SpaceX luck on the night before the Falcon Heavy launch, prompting Musk to send this thank you reply equipped with a wink kiss emoji. <laughs> and then last year, Bezos went on to say, My view on this, this is a big industry. There's room for lots of winners. If we're going to achieve for humanity what I want to achieve, we need thousands of companies. And with Blue Origin's reusable New Glenn slated to launch in 2021, and SpaceX Starship prototype slated to be completed by June, the 2020s are going to be fantastic. At the end of the day, it's exciting to have not one, but two great pioneers in commercial aerospace. And it's good to be excited for space exploration once again. Alright, 
That's all I have for now. I hope you enjoyed your journey. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I am Neil Scribe, and I'll see you on the next journey.